No Film School's coverage of NAB 2018 is brought to you by Black Magic Design, creating revolutionary solutions for film, post-production, and television. Adorama, the world's only full-service destination for photo, video, and electronics. And My Road Reel, the world's largest short film competition is back. Register now at myroadreel.com. Hey, this is Charles Hayne. I'm in the back part of the booth for Blackmagic here, talking to VFX wizard Adam Clark. You were Fusion long before Blackmagic bought well, Fusion. Um, back when it was Digital Fusion. Yeah. Uh, so this is, I, I assume that was still Ion back then, uh, and primarily because as a, we were PC oriented and it was the only node-based compositor uh, for PC, I years believe. before Nuke. Years, years before Nuke. Yeah, back when Nuke was uh, just an, before it was an idea, likely of digital domains. It was, um, but we used, uh, so we used Fusion and, back when it was Digital Fusion, and um, it, we've been using it since then, and it just become part of uh, it's become part of our pipeline. I mean, initially, it was uh, the standardized tools like your Roto tools, uh, the green screening tools were, were fabulous. And you know, just the node-based workflow was clearly the way to go. So tell me about the transition Blackmagic bought. You know, I was a Resolve user before Blackmagic bought Resolve. You were a Fusion user, Blackmagic bought Fusion. You're still a Fusion user. Talk to me about the last couple of years of Fusion and how you might have seen it evolve, how that might have affected you. Well, it's interesting. Like the two biggest um, evolutions in Fusion have been from between Digital Fusion and the name Fusion, now that's still with Ion, um, where they clearly, something happened and there were the 3D tool set became a part of the system. And that was, to us, that was, we could we could see where this was going. We could see that it was game changing for us. And, and, and I hate using that word game changing, but it was, and, um, and it, it affected our workflow greatly. And um, so then we were getting concerned that some of the updates that we would have hoped for perhaps weren't updating as fast as we would like. We're still fans of the, the tools and the, and the application. We never switched to anything else, but when we found out that Blackmagic bought it, I, we had a, I had a party. I, we, we threw a small party for it because, because this, this was a tool that we've invested over a decade into. And the idea of, and again, to us, again, the great thing with Blackmagic getting involved is for everyone else is it's they were literally giving it away for a certain life versus, I mean, we purchased it back when it was $6,000 a license, you know. Can you repeat that? It, it, when it was Ion, it was like $6,000. It was, you know, for a license. Per seat. Per seat. Whoa. And so that was the value that we put on the tool set when purchasing licenses. So, you know, it's not because, okay, well, it's, well, great, Black Magic, it's, it's it, it, you know, in with DaVinci, blah, 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 blah. It's much less expensive. No, I mean the tool set to us is the best there is, and the most recent project you worked on using Fusion was Jeepers Creepers, correct? Well, that was the one that we were uh, here. I mean, we're we're working on three now that I you can't, know, talk, can't about. talk about, but that we're using Fusion on those. Yes, the tools have evolved, and so the celebration with Black Magic was a we knew it would be supported. We knew there was a massive entity that we already owned some of their hardware before, so we, we saw the impact that Blackmagic's purchase of DaVinci had on the color grading and post-production community, and apply that same, you know, that same thought to what it meant for Fusion in our process, and integration into standards like Resolve were, um, it was very exciting for us. And as far as Fusion specific, uh, it was great to see a, um, the big one for us this year uh, in Fusion 9 was VR. That was massive because we've been getting more and more in VR projects, not necessarily for film, but for commercial and interactive projects because we, um, you know, I, I have a software background and so we're doing AR, all sorts of stuff and that, the AR tool set, the VR tool set plays into that. Um, things I'm excited about since Blackmagic's gotten involved, um, the, uh, the new Kier, the, um, the planner tracker, the planner tracker was, in my mind something that was if there was one big thing that was missing from fusion that i felt was a standardized standard tool thing that i always otherwise would need to reach somewhere else for now it's right in fusion um and i love it 
Awesome. Um, so with Resolve 14, it was it still wasn't an integrated product, but there was a dynamic linking, right, between yeah. Fusion and... Were you using that feature at all? No, I, a li um, not so much the dynamic linking. Uh, we were using, uh, for the last movie star, we used um, Resolve to pull, our, pull all of our plates. So usually, um, the process historically has been one of... We get a draw. We get the plates. We get the footage uh, that we need to affect, and then from there uh, we do our work. But it was interesting with this because it was more of a. There was some more back and forth with the director in terms of uh, what may be visual effect shots and what may not be, um, and uh, and the edit wasn't locked prior to us getting involved with the post side of it, which is always a very dangerous and expensive thing to do. Um, all right, so we should wrap up. I just want to ask, have you played with 15 at all? Have you started working with the integration? Are you guys then going to be working I'm, with 15? I'm, I'm sure we will. Again, I'm not as Resolve-centric. Uh, we we don't, most of, you know, 99% of our post work is is our visual effects. We, we do edit, but it's doesn't, uh, not in the same profession, I would never call myself a professional editor, but that said, we use Resolve all the time for, you know, coloring uh, the post side of some other projects, and uh, and we certainly will use it more if it's, you know, just kind of built into everything. Uh, that's Yeah, I mean, I think eventually Fusion will, you will access Fusion through Resolve. It'll be interesting to see, I can't, I'm looking forward to seeing how see how that's going to take place. Um, I'm already comfortable with the Resolve interface, so it's not an intimidating transition. Uh, but we'll see. What I'm most, what to me, my biggest question is one of the things we love about Fusion is that uh, the unlimited render nodes per, you know, so I can have, you know, I have a dozen machines sitting in the back that I can throw a comp at, you know, I can still be working on my on our, our main machine and have another one set up as a render manager to manage those that's not rendering anything and we can keep working and while you know the farm in the back is doing its thing and uh, I would be interested to see I am interested in seeing how that is going to play into and how that's going to work with resolve and if that is still all going to be in play because that's such a huge feature with us that but it's currently working in the black magic fusion you're using oh, yes. now yes, yes so yes. We can hope that something like that will be integrated, and well, in. having that so. power for background render node so. and color would be great too. Yeah, I, I would think so. I would think so. It's, um, I would, I would have to think so. It's, uh, you know, again, I, I always sing that song of you know why I love fusion. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Hey, Adam, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was a real pleasure talking to you. Uh, so from the back of the booth at Black Magic at NAB Show 2018, this has been Charles Hand for No Film School.